Big security. Simon, good afternoon and, and thank you for joining us. Now, just hearing from the ECB, they've left rates unchanged, but they're scaling back their asset purchases. Does it, did this come as any surprise? Good afternoon, Leanne. No, not really. Um, we did see uh, the initial um, volume of uh, bond buying in Europe around that 60 billion euros a month. Uh, they did kick it up. Uh, around about a year ago to, to that 80, so they brought it back down. And so, you know, I don't think that was too much of a surprise. I think, obviously, that's still a significant amount of uh, quantitative easing uh, in Europe and uh, still a significant amount of uh, a support for the global economy. Mm. Now, it's all about uh, the Federal Reserve next week. Um, everyone watching and waiting in anticipation and preparing, you could say, for this imminent rate rise. How are we seeing bond yields tracking? Well, this is an interesting thing. I mean, we've, uh, we've had over the last year seen a lot of commentary coming out from the US Fed and we just haven't seen that match by the market. We just haven't seen interest rates moving to prepare for these increases and uh, that's led the market to believe that uh, we wouldn't get the succession of increases even as the Fed was preparing it. Uh, for this time, uh, we're certainly seeing the market move in preparation for that and we've reached uh, beyond 2016 levels. Yields are now reaching levels we haven't seen since uh, 2014, around the 10-year 2015. Uh, we saw initial movement in the short end of the US curve uh, earlier this week. We're now seeing that reflected in the long end as well. So we're really seeing, you know, quite a broad uh, readjustment of the yield curve reflecting uh, the 100% chance we now have priced into that move by the <laughs> Fed next week. And Simon, if in fact they do get going, do you think we'll, uh, we can expect to see those yields continuing their move higher? Well, seeing that reflected in the long end of the yield curve, seeing the 10-year move up, seeing the 30-year move up, uh, you know, certainly suggests that the market is starting to buy into uh, the dot points or the succession of rate rises that the US Fed has suggested, which is uh, around three for this year. Uh, so I think, you know, you are starting to see that adjusted. That's quite different to uh, last year where you had that uh, initial move in December and then, you know, the market just wasn't prepared and, and certainly wasn't pricing in any further rate increases and therefore we didn't get another one until 12 months later. Mm. Um, what about Aussie yields? Are we seeing them following US yields higher? This is really interesting, absolutely. So we've actually got, especially in the longer end, uh, the Aussie yields following us up. The Aussie 10 year is around 2.97. Now it hasn't been 3% since around July 2015, so almost two years. So that's certainly broken through that, uh, those highs we saw through 2016. So, uh, you know, our yields moving up on the back of those US yields as well. Fantastic. And what about, um, as always, we speak to you about you know, interesting Aussie issuance and so forth. Tell us what's happening today. Interesting. So a lot of uh, focus on the Aussie housing market and uh, we've seen uh, Torrens, which is the uh, residential mortgage-backed uh, securities issuer for Adelaide, uh, Bendigo Adelaide Bank, issue some RMBS stock. This is an ability for banks to uh, move their mortgage books uh, off balance sheet. So that's very, very positive. And we've seen Shin Huan Bank, uh, a Korean bank, uh, do an issuance as well. So still a significant amount of opportunity for investors out there. All right. Excellent. As always, it's been great talking to you, Simon. Thanks very much for the update. Thank you very much, Leanne. Goodbye. Simon Michelle joining us there live from Fig Securities.